Hi, good morning everyone. Today we will be talking about stress cardiac MRI and late gadolinium enhancement which we see. So this is the short axis view of a patient. Here we are able to see this is the right ventricle, left ventricle. This is how rapidly it moves. So I just uh, given a slower version in which we are able to see the myocardium contracting. If we keep the cursor in the center, we can see how much each and every part of the segment of the heart is moving towards the center of the lumen. This is the right ventricle, left ventricle, mitral valve, so you can see this is the aortic valve and reflex of blood which is seen here. Two chamber view, here we are able to see the left atrium, left ventricle, mitral valve again, uh, papillary muscles and movement of the blood which is uh, beautifully seen in the two chamber view. And this is the four chamber view. Again, right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle, mitral valve, tricuspid valve, aortic valve, atriomitral valve continuity, and the efflux of blood. So these are the three important views, two chamber, four chamber, and short axis view, which we normally take in patients. Coming to the uh, next set of images, which is the stress perfusion images. This is after giving adenosine, we uh, see how the contrast is behaving. So this contrast is entering to the right ventricle, then into the left ventricle lumen. There are areas of blackishness which we are able to see here. All these are perfusion defects which are seen in stress perfusion images. This is in the mid segment of the run. Whereas in rest perfusion without adenosine, when contrast enters into the right ventricle and left ventricle lumen, there is no perfusion defects which are seen within the left ventricular subendocardium. This is a mid segment of the left ventricle which we are seeing here. Coming to the apex, in the apex when we see there is a perfusion defect which is seen here. Uh, after the contrast has entered into the left ventricle lobe and the entire left ventricle myocardium is enhancing but this inferior part of the uh, heart muscle is not showing any enhancement. So this is seen in stress perfusion. The next thing that we are able to see is in the rest perfusion that is without giving any cardiac stresses at nose or dopitamin. There is a perfusion defect which is seen in the apex when the rest of the myocardium is showing enhancement. Late catalinium enhancement, this late catalinium is after giving contrast 10 to 20 minutes. What are the uh, uh, contrast images we are taking in this time frame is called as late catalinium enhancement. Here we are able to see uh, an area of transmural enhancement which is nearly 75%, nearly 100%. And here also more than 100% which is seen involved in the mid-inferior and apical inferior segments of the left ventricle. This is the coronary images in the same patient. Here we are able to see in the LAD territory there is areas of stenosis which is seen around 40 to 50 percent which is seen here. There is a critical stenosis which is seen here. In the LCX territory which was showing the areas of scarring which is showing a tight stenosis, a calcified lesion uh, with near complete occlusion which is seen here. Also another critical stenosis which is seen here. The left main, here we are able to see an eccentric aspect block which is seen in the left main which is causing significant occlusion of the left main ostium. Right coronary, in the right coronary we are able to see the right coronary is small in this patient and it is not supplying the posterior descending artery. So in this patient the inferior segments of the heart which are supplied uh, are supplied by the LCX rather than the RCA territory. So few important things that we need to know in cardiac MRI is first what sequences to do. The traditional thing is to keep it simple and short. For example, we do only four set of Im images. One is a morphology anatomy. We saw the four chamber, two chamber and short axis view, which basically helps in identifying the morphology or anatomy of the images. Then I do a stress perfusion, which is a short axis, which I showed. Dress perfusion, which is again a short axis. One is with by giving adenosine of 140 uh, micrograms per kilogram per minute. Others without giving any drug, you just give a contrast and see how the contrast is behaving in the right ventricle and left ventricle. Then you take a uh, late gadolinium enhancement images again only in three planes, four chamber and two chamber and short axis view. So <coughs> keep the sequences as uh, limited as uh, possible. You're going to answer specific questions. The reason why you want to keep it is you want to end your study within 15 to 29 minutes. For example, if you see the morphology and anatomy images, to take a four chamber view, you need seven breath holds and each breath hold should last for seven seconds. So the entire sequence gets over within 49 seconds. 
So all the, this is this is a prethol which is seen in our scanner in uh, the time which is seen in our uh, scanner. It might be different for each and every scanner, but you should understand in the whole the anatomy images will should take another five minutes, stress perfusion one or two uh, minutes, and the late gadolinium uh, sequences should take another six to ten minutes. So your breath hold uh, is a must, and most of these patients are cardiac patients who will be already in pulmonary uh, edema, who will have severe dyspnea. So asking them to repeatedly breath hold, and each and every breath hold lasting for uh, 15 to 20 seconds is tough for them. So limit your sequences to as minimal as possible, and uh, and uh, keep it as short as possible. This is a two important things that you'll have to know about cardiac MRI. Otherwise, your sequences are not going to come out well. Third thing is, is it a must to do stress perfusion? We saw in our case also. In the rest perfusion, there was no perfusion defects which was seen in the subendocardium of the uh, left ventricular myocardium. Whereas one in stress, we are able to see so many black areas of perfusion defects. So this inducible ischemia is picked up only in stress images. That is only after giving adenosine, we will be able to pick up these images whereas in stress we will be able to pick up only uh, non-inducible ischemic uh, images so what drug do we give to identify stress one is adenosine second one is dobutamine i personally go for adenosine dobutamine cannot the simple reason is dobutamine cannot be given if you have a systolic blood pressure more than uh, 180 or 200 most of these patients will also be hypertensive diabetic patients and once you go into the gantry they'll their blood pressure is going to again shoot up so you try to use adenosine adenosine comes in uh, 2 ml ampules each containing 6 milligram the thumb rule is like uh, why adenosine is good is its half life is around 10 seconds so it, it causes these uh, vasodilatory effects bradycardia and hypotension so any of these adverse effect occurs you can immediately negate it within like uh, 30 seconds to one minute most important contraindication is asthma heart blocks and long QT syndromes okay in general we'll be giving 3 ml per minute for five minutes for an average 70 kilogram person Coming next to the type of enhancement, so either it is subendocardial, which we are able to see here, or transmural, the entire length of the left ventricular myocardium, or it can be mid wall, where the endocardial and epicardial part of the heart will be normal, only the mid part is involved, or sub epicardial, where we will be able to see the epicardial aspect of the myocardium, which is showing enhancement. Interpretation of LGE, uh, these are various tables you will be seeing in the internet. Let's remember only a few things. Subendocardial transmural, it's going to be ischemic in nature. Global, it is going to be amyloidosis and systemic sclerosis. Midwall at the attachment of the uh, septum uh, with the right ventricle, it is going to be HOCM. Remaining myocarditis, uh, cardiomyopathies are going to be the typical septal kind of uh, enhancement, midwall enhancement. Sarcoidosis, myocarditis, Anderson fabric can either have a midwall kind of an involvement or it can have an apical involvement. Other thing, the peripartium cardiomyopathy. This is something that will that will occasionally be seeing a pregnant patient who is having severe myocardiopathy. You give contrast, there won't be any enhancement at all. Please don't report it as absence of myocardial enhancement, uh, absence of myocarditis. If there is a regional wall motion abnormality, even if there is no enhancement, which can be seen in peripartum cardiomyopathy, they also have uh, these uh, wash, uh, regional wall motion abnormalities. Coming to what are the things that we report in a lay gadolinium enhancement, usually we see whether it is less than 50% or more than 50%. If it is less than 50% transmural thickness and more than 10 viable segments, are less, then it is good for revascularization. Basically, what are this enhancing is all scar tissue. So the important question is whether to revascularize or not. How The thumb rule is if it is less than 50% transmural uh, enhancement, then you can go ahead and revascularize. Or if there is like uh, less than 10 via uh, more than 10 viable segments, you can go on revascularize. This is based on the 17 segment hard model. So that is the first thing that we report in a late catalinium enhancement uh, pattern. The other things which are recently coming up is the MVO, microvascular obstruction, in which this is more picked up in the early gadolinium enhancement stage. LG is between 10 to 20 minutes. EG is between 3 to 5 minutes. When you give, what happens is within the non-enhancing areas, uh, we are able to see some few enhancing or hypo 
uh, intense signal areas. These are basically not viable tissues. These are basically obstructed blood vessels because of which stagnated blood is looking. This is a very poor uh, prognosis in which they will have adverse uh, LV remodeling and major cardiovascular events. Second thing that can be picked up is the thrombus which is attached to the left ventricular wall. This has a higher risk of systemic embolization like stroke and uh, arterial occlusions, lower limb occlusions. These can be picked up. Third important thing is the perinfarct zone. That is within the infarct area if the enhancement uh, using AA models. These orange things are two standard deviations, three standard deviations, uh, more whitishness or uh, enhancing areas. Whereas the yellow is a perinfarct area which is just two standard deviation uh, enhancing areas which are seen. So less enhancing areas are put as uh, yellow and more enhancing areas are put as red. These less enhancing areas are called as the perinfarct zone and the more the perinfarct zone is present, there is a higher predictor of ventricular tachycardia and mortality in these patients. Coming to the next important thing, whenever you're interpreting cardiac MRI, do review the coronary angio images. As in our patient, we saw that there were areas of mid-inferior and basal inferior segments which were showing perfusion defects. So according to the traditional sounding model of heart, we might interpret this as to areas of RCA territory. But what we saw in the coronary angio images, RCA was hyperplastic or it was not supplying the uh, PDA. So it was basically the LCX which was going and supplying the uh, mid inferior and basal inferior segments of the heart. So don't uh, blindly write this as an RC territory. It corresponds to the LCX territory in this patient. So check for dominance in all these patients and go and look at the coronary angio images in all these patients before you submit your report. Coming to the concept of null myocardium, so to see, to look at the enhancement, you need to have the heart which is extremely black, so that any enhancement which can, any enhance can can be better picked up. So these are the null myocardial images in which around in this patient it is around 260. It's usually between 200 to 300, and if it is not uh, properly uh, null, then we'll have images like this. So in this, even if there is an enhancement which is sitting here, we might not be able to pick it up. So this is a sequence that you will be running. Uh, the, uh, in our scanner, it's called as a look locker sequence. It's uh, run before you run your late keratinum enhancement e uh, images. So between your perfusion and LG images, you need to run your null myocardium each and every time you give your contrast images so that you can appropriately look for the enhancement pattern. Next thing, this is something that uh, is usually asked for PG students. What is stunning? What is hibernating myocardium? To understand that, let us understand the pathophysiology a little bit. There is ischemia. If it is severe and prolonged, it goes into infarct or necrosis. There is no return of contractile function. But there are two other situations which can occur. One is reperfusion occurs or relief of ischemia. And there is no necrosis. And the myocardium goes into a stunned phase. Here, the, it is basically a transient post-ischemic dysfunction in which there will be regional wall motional abnormality. The reperfusion is good. But it is not working very well. That is stunned myocardium. Whereas, in a chronic low for flow, or repeated stunning which is happening what happens is uh, the myocardium goes into hibernating kind of a state in which due to adaptive mechanisms there's still a regional wall motion abnormality and doesn't work well but in revascularization does well so basically if it is reversible irreversible we call it as the scar tissue or lg scar images in which there is enhancement if there is no enhancement uh, but there are perfusion defects it is viable dysfunctional myocardium either stunt or hibernative hibernating so hibernating is reversible myocardial dysfunction with reduced myocardial perfusion stunt is reversible the myocardial dysfunction with restored myocardial perfusion most of the time when we are imaging a stunned myocardium, it is during the post-ischemia state. <coughs> so your post-perfusion uh, uh, images, there would be restored perfusion. So there might not be any perfusion abnormalities which are seen, but how the function will be less and the viability would be good. When compared to a hibernating myocardium in which the perfusion images will be less, there would be less perfusion, there would be less function and the viability would be preserved. To summarize the difference between stun, hibernating, ischemia and infarct, what is the single most important thing is all the four entities will have regional or emotional abnormality or there would be uh, reduced amount of movement which is seen within the wall. But myocardial infarct is the only thing in which in, in the late gerolium enhancement in images we will be able to see scar tissue or enhancement. Whereas the remaining stun, hibernating or even myocardial ischemia there won't be any scar tissue per se. And in rest images 
in stunt in a stunt more than rest and stress because of a reperfusion which has already occurred there won't be any perfusion defects whereas in hibernating there will be a reduced fixed defects which will be seen in both rest as well as in stress in our patient we saw two areas one in the mid there were areas of uh, perfusion defects which are picked up only in stress so those were the areas of myocardial ischemia and the apex in which we saw both uh, in rest as well as this that is basically an infarcted area which was corresponding to our lg images so the same patient will have few areas which are having myocardial ischemia which can be picked up only on rest and stress perfusion images and myocardial infarct which will be picked up in your uh, stress images rest images as well as your lg images so uh, the important reason why we want to differentiate between these four entities is uh, there is a good benefit of revascularization only in the first three if there is a clear cut myocardial infarct in which more than 50% transmural infarct is there or more than seven segments of the heart is involved even if we revascularize that's not, that might not be of much benefit to the patient coming to the last point so we are talking about perfusion imaging perfusion imaging is also done by the nuclear medicine department using either spect or pet the difference is spect is more commonly available but it has uh, lots of false positiveness because of diaphragmatic attenuation and gut scatter especially in inferior wall and patients who are obese nearly everyone who is a cardiac patient will be obese and many of these patients will have left ventricular uh, wall as well as inferior wall abnormalities so spect might not be reliable in such such patients it is slightly better but uh, talk with your nuclear medicine guys to know whether it is spect they are doing or pet they are doing same thing in uh, in, uh, in the uh, this is the rest images in which there are no perfusion defects in the stress images we are able to see that there are areas of perfusion defects the interpretation is going to be very simple this is a comparative table between spec pet uh, echo also can pick up these abnormalities as well as mr imaging so we can see in everything mr imaging scores over spec and uh, pet except for maybe like a uh, pacemaker again this is a fallacy uh, pacemaker is not an absolute contraindication contraindication it's a relative contraindication you can call your vendor ask them to change the mode and can do an mri actually uh, the images quality might not be very good actually that and that is one of the important things actually okay and you have you can give your echo kind of a uh, report there are lots of uh, colorful tables which pop out uh, based on the left wall uh, ventricle wall thickness motion related thickness and maximum thickness so my image is better than nuclear medicine imaging because functional imaging is better anatomy is better and there is no radiation which is involved when compared to spectrum better yeah uh, as we saw if it is black it is perfusion if it is white it is scar tissue in lg images so the interpretation of cardiac mri is important is very easy but more important is to get, to get it done for example there needs to be two people who will be injecting adenosine she has to tell uh, that uh, one ml of contrast has gone 20 second timer is uh, left infusion pumps have to be sent if you are not using an infusion infusion pump you have to use an hand injection so two sisters will be monitoring the uh, entry of adenosine two of them will be looking at the gadolinium entering into the uh, uh, patient and making sure that it is appropriately uh, getting opacified the person who is sitting in the gantry will have to look for the good quality of images so it's always a teamwork which goes into play as far as a cardiac MRI is done the interpretation is quite simple black is perfusion defect white is scar tissue thank you